In today's video, I'm going to go over the difference between mass and weight, and we're going to do that through a brief introduction between what mass and weight are, and then we'll go over three or four example problems. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step -step Science Kit, all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that so many people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe, click the notification bell, give me a thumbs up, leave me a positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, I made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials where you can find my teacher's paid teacher website where they're looking for example problems, notes, uh, practice problems with all the solutions, labs you can do with PTT simulations. It's all there at my teacher's paid teacher's website. The link is in the description below. And this is how I like to go through the difference between mass and weight. It's important, I think, that students understand that mass and weight are not the same thing and that there's a difference between mass and weight. And the way I start is I like to pick a student and I like to ask that student what is your weight or how much do you weigh? Now, we've been in class for a little bit and we know we're only going to be using the metric system. And most of the time, students will say something like, my weight is 65 kilograms. And then I'll wait for a minute, I'll look around the room, and I'll ask, is that really that person's weight? And somebody will usually recognize that that is not that person's weight because that is measured in kilograms, and kilograms is mass. So when you say 65 kilograms, or when you say you weigh 65 kilograms, that is not your weight, that is your mass. And then the question is, well, how do we figure out what your weight is if that is your mass? Now, your mass might actually be 65 kilograms, but that is not your weight. So I ask, okay, how do we get from mass to weight? Oftentimes, somebody will say something about 9.81 and multiplying 9.81, and that is exactly right. We have to use Newton's second law, which is F equals ma. And when we're talking about weight, because weight is the force due to gravity, we say Fg, the force of gravity, and we have to multiply that times m, the mass, times g, which on the Earth is 9.81. And when you do that, as you'll see in the examples we're going to go through, you get the person's weight, and weight is different than mass because mass is measured in kilograms, and weight is, of course, a force, and it's measured in newtons. Okay? So that's how I start, and then I'm going to go over what is the difference between mass and weight. Okay, what is mass? Mass is simply a measure of an object's resistance to change in motion. That's kind of the best, like, textbook uh, definition, and that has to do with inertia. Resistance to, to change in motion is inertia, and maybe for a little bit better explanation, we might say it's the amount of stuff that something is made of, and maybe you don't want to say stuff, so we say it's the amount of matter that an object contains, and what is all that matter made of? That matter is made of atoms. You are made of atoms, and that's protons, neutrons, and electrons. And basically, if you have more mass, a higher mass, that means you have more matter, and you're made of more protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, it's a measure, really, of the amount of stuff, the amount of matter you're made of, and it's also, you might say, an object's resistance to a change in motion, because the more massive something is, the harder it is to change its motion. Okay, mass has the abbreviation M, of course. It's the base unit in the metric system for mass is the kilogram. Not the gram, it's the kilogram. Although oftentimes we use grams, like we can say the mass is 12.5 grams, or we could say something like 65 kilograms. And it's important to understand that really your mass doesn't change. It's not dependent upon your location. And we don't really mean your location on Earth, but really your location with respect to another object, like if you were to go to another planet in the solar system. Your mass always remains constant because basically you're always made of the same amount of stuff, unless, of course, you lose some mass or gain some mass. But generally, when we're talking about an object, we think of it as not changing its mass. Okay, so that's mass, a measure of the amount of matter an object contains. Now, what is weight? Weight is a force. Weight is the force on an object due to gravity. So when we talk about weight, it's the force of gravity. Now, we don't often say, oh, what's your force due to gravity? We just say, what is your weight? And it's the force of attraction between two objects that have mass. The reason you really have weight is because you're on Earth, and the Earth is pulling down on you, and you're pulling up on the Earth, and it's the measure of the force of attraction between two objects. And when we're talking about weight as a force, we use the abbreviation most of the time of FG, force due to gravity. Sometimes you'll see people use a W for weight. It kind of makes sense. But W is kind of the unit for watt and work. 
work is measured in joules. Watt is the unit for power. So we don't typically use a W for the abbreviation. And the unit is the newton, the force. It's a force, so it's measured in newtons. And we might say that something weighs 15 newtons, or we might say that something weighs 0.75 newtons, but it's the force of attraction that the Earth pulls down on you, gives you your weight. And the more mass you have, the more weight you have. So there is a direct relationship between the two, and it does depend on your location, as we'll see, because if you go to the moon, you'll weigh less. If you go to a bigger planet, you'll weigh more. If you go away from the Earth, there's the distance between you and the Earth increases, and there's less force of attraction. Okay, so it depends on your location, but your mass does not. And we usually measure that with Newton's second law, which is F equals ma. And then we can change that when we talk about gravity. We just write F equals mg because g is the gravitational field strength or the acceleration due to gravity. And at the surface of the Earth, that's going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. But in different places, G is going to be different, and therefore your weight will be different, as you'll see in some of our examples. And this is our first example. Look at that cute baby manatee. Now, we want to talk about really how we convert between mass and weight. That's what we want to do here. And this is a baby manatee, and he has a mass of 65, 165 kilograms, and we want to know what does he weigh? What is the weight of that baby manatee. So we're going to get our equation Fg equals mg. We just simply multiply the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We'll assume this is on the surface of the earth. Okay, and we just, it doesn't say we're somewhere else, and therefore it's 165 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, and that's going to give us a weight of 1,619 newtons. 1,619 newtons. Now that sounds like a lot, Maybe that's why we don't use newtons, because it, it would be 10 times as much. And that baby manatee is thinking, wow, that's a lot of force. That's a lot of weight. Maybe I better get some more exercise. Okay, he's going to swim off and get some exercise. All right, now let's see if we can go the other way. See, this dump truck has a weight of 25 newtons. It weighs 25 newtons, and what is its mass? Well, we're going to get out the same equation, Fg equals mg, but the previous example, we want to solve for mg, and this example, we want to solve for the mass. g is, the, is known. It's 9.81. So I like to use this device with my students. I call it the magic physics triangle. We put the uh, fg, the force, the mass, and g in the triangle, and we want to solve for the mass. So I tell my students, well, cover up the mass, and then you can see what's left over. It tells you how to solve for that equation for the mass, and that means it's going to be Fg divided by G, which is the weight, okay, divided by the acceleration due to gravity, and that means that Fg divided by G, and the Fg, the weight of the object, is 25 newtons, and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. You can assume that's what it would be at the surface of the Earth, and this doesn't say we're somewhere else again. And therefore, that thing has a mass of just about 2.5 kilograms. Okay? Okay, that's how you do that. That's solving for mass and weight. And now we can assume that we're going to be going somewhere else where G is going to be different. So here's the zombie girl. And we're going to say that she has a mass of 35 kilograms. And she's going to take a trip to the moon. If she weighs 57 newtons on the moon... What is the acceleration due to gravity? So we're going to get out our equation again, and we're going to get out our magic physics triangle. And we want to solve for the acceleration due to gravity on the moon, and that is G here. We're given her weight on the moon. We know her mass, and we know her mass is not going to change, regardless of whether she's on the Earth or on the moon. So we're going to solve for G, and that means G is going to be Fg divided by M. You can see if we cover up G, and we get Fg, the weight, divided by M, and that's going to be 57 divided by 35. And that means that the acceleration due to gravity on the moon is 1.62 meters per second squared. It's about a sixth of what it is on the Earth. And that's because the moon has less mass than the Earth. That's the main reason. Okay, so that's solving for force, solving for mass, and solving for gravity. We solve for all the variables that are in that equation, and we used our magic physics triangle to help us out with that. And now let's do one more example, 
And let's just say that on its home planet, this space creature, see this guy right here? He has a mass of 15 kilograms. We want to know what is his mass and weight on Earth and on Mercury, because he's going to go from his home planet, we can say, to Earth, and then he's going to go to Mercury, and we want to know what is his mass and his weight. Now, his mass does not depend on his location. So we know on his home planet, he has a mass of 15 kilograms. Okay, That's the stuff he's made of. And if he goes to the Earth, he's made of the same stuff. And if he goes to Mercury, he's made of the same stuff. So his mass is going to be 15 kilograms. And regardless of where he goes, his mass will always be 15 kilograms. Now, in order to find his weight, we have to use our weight equation. And we're going to use that for both places, Earth and Mercury. And if we do that for the Earth, we just multiply his mass times the acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational field strength at the, on the Earth. And that is 15 times 9.81, and that gives us a weight of 147 newtons. Okay, now, for Mercury, what is the acceleration to the gravity? Well, you would just have to look it up. I just looked this up on the Internet, and it says that on Mercury, on the surface of Mercury, the acceleration to the gravity is 3.59. You can see, you know, it's not quite half, but it's approximately half of what Earth's is, you know, a little less than half. But you just multiply the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And on Mercury, therefore, he would weigh 54 kilograms. Okay? Excuse me, 54 newtons. So that would be his weight. All you do is multiply the mass, which doesn't change, times the acceleration due to gravity, and you get 54 newtons. Lower acceleration due to gravity, excuse me, higher acceleration due to gravity, more weight, lower, less weight, like that. Okay, so there you go. We did three different and four different examples solving for mass, weight, and acceleration due to gravity, and we compared what it would be on Earth and on Mercury at two different places. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Support my channel, Step-by-Step -step Science. Please subscribe. Please click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our amazing content. Please uh, give us a thumbs up. Please leave us a nice positive comment. And don't forget to share this video. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.